In shale gas, uh, because the pore throats are quite a small, uh, the capillary pressure becomes quite large. And as a result, the phase envelopes is affected as a result of this capillary pressure. So we cannot do the same conventional equation states that we do on the black oil in these reservoirs, and we have to consider capillary pressure effects. So in this example, I solely focus on the capillary pressure effects on the equation of states for the gas condensates, both dew point and bubble point, and liquid dropouts, and anything that's um, related to the phase envelope. And there is another example that's solely um, focus on the equation of states, and you can go and uh, do the search on YouTube. In shale gas, uh, we have a variation of pores. So it's not like we have the matrix with consistent type of pores. So we have a nanopores, quite a small, and we have a macro pores, which and uh, relatively to these pores are large. So in the same temperature and pressure, of the reservoir, uh, the fluids here and there behaves totally different. So at pressure close to the dew point, because of the capillary pressure, we have a liquid here. So it, it's a fluid condensed here. But in these uh, larger pores, because we can't, we should neglect the capillary pressure effects. Uh, the fluids are supercritical, and we may have some liquids droplets. Um, inside the system. So we have to consider this type of capillary pressure effects into our modeling. And the important thing is how to consider that in, um, in the modeling. So in conventional type of equation of states, um, PV or the vapor pressure and the liquid pressure considered to be the same. So and they are the same as a P. So why is we consider this? Because in one of the last steps in equation of states, you have to calculate the fugacity. And the fugacity is a function of pressure. And the fugacity of the vapor is equal to fugacity at the pressure of the vapor. But if you assume these are the same, so you only care about one pressure. But if you want to consider the capillary pressure effects, then PL and PV are not the same, and there is a capillary pressure difference that affect this. So how this capillary pressure is calculated? So in this type of modeling, um, they, they use pretty simple Young uh, Laplace equation, which it says 2 sigma over R. You see there is no cosine of delta. delta. Uh, so that means the vetability uh, angle is zero. Um, so we have a pore radius, but in reality, we don't have a pore radius in these reservoirs. Um, the only way we can have it, send it to the lab and do the calculation and like, uh, measurements on those. But normally we have a matrix permeability and there are correlations like Aguilera that you can calculate the pore radius. And that's what the actual software does. So you have a matrix permeability, and based on the correlation, it's, you think that's suitable for your reservoir. Uh, for example, Aguilera. The software goes and calculate pore radius for the capillary pressure effects into the equation of states or in other applications, which makes the life quite simple because permeability of the matrix is something most Reservoir engine production is comfortable with, but pore radius uh, is not. And one of the big questions is pore radius, which pore radius? And one of the common ways is 35% of the smallest size, but uh, it's it's not common um, uh, jargon for most production engineers and reservoir engineers. And but the sigma, the interfacial tension, calculated in the equation of states calculation. So by saying that, after we've done the flashing and the first steps or the previous step, uh, you calculate liquid vapor and equivalent mole, uh, molecule weight and x and y, the mole fraction of uh, gas for that component. And there's a Parker um, component. 
uh, parameter which is calculated or given for different like is for c1 is known or some correlation like cats gives you as a function of molecule weight there are different way of handling this parameter uh, coefficients and the way you use different models gives you slightly different calculation this four is what we use in asha software but there are some other numbers common number for this parameter is four so let's now go and in the software and see how to treat this uh, uh, capillary pressure into the software. To consider the capillary pressure on the phase change, first of all, we have to go and assign the pore radius. But in ASHA software, you can't assign the pore radius. Uh, you have to assign the permeability of the matrix which is one milli RC here and now we want to change it to something lower to see the effect and then you see the pore radius changing here by using different models here so the default is Aglera which is kind of suitable for most shade gases and if you like to choose this one you also can use colored C um, but in this example we use Aglera so by assigning the permeability of matrix you assign the pore radius uh, to the reservoir. Then we come over to the gas um, to see the phase change effect. And now because we changed something, it's run everything from the start. And again, we take care of, um, we don't want to see uh, the high rate. Now we act activate the pore capillary pressure and equation of states and the pore is it comes from the matrix property uh, uh, it's linked to that zone but now we have to run this by clicking here to see the effect of um, capillary pressure the effect of um, the capillary pressure on the dew point is minimal it mostly has effect on the bubble point so to understand the effect of the bubble point here um, by looking at the face uh, envelope it's uh, it's not possible to see it we have to follow this uh, pressure which is 16 367 kpa so now by clicking this we see what's the uh, new bubble point at this point is so we have to let the software run uh, everything and once you have the capillary pressure, it takes a bit longer. So now we see from 16,367, we have 100 kPa less at the bubble point because of the capillary pressure.